the documentary last week on the Freemasons. Is Freemasonry a cult or a part of the occult? Okay, I'm going to start with Nicole. Honestly, I I think it could really go either way, okay. depending on how you look at it. But either way is in it's okay and it's not okay, or either way is in it might be a cult or an occult, or part of the occult? Both. Okay. It, I think it depends on more just how you see it, but with me, I would say more of a cult. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, just because they're just so focused on just one certain thing. Okay. That's not God-centered. It's just so... I don't know. So, so you, kind of hard to explain. So you think it's probably something weird. Okay. It's definitely strange. <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. Dan, what did you think? I think it's an occult. Yeah? So you think it is bad? Because yes. you don't have to pick between cult or a right. cult. You, you I can think say. it's just everything is, it just has to do with, with Satan and enemy and okay. devil and all that stuff, satanic. You definitely think it, it is bad? Yes. Okay. Zach, what did you think? I think it's uh, neither. Neither? I mean, yeah. You think it's okay? Yeah. Okay. Tell us about that. Uh, Especially since you're the, you're the dissenter here, so yeah. I really want you to... Because... Um, I did some, well, I Google it up uh -huh. this afternoon, and it basically uh, uh, says that uh, it uh, anybody can join, no matter what faith, they all believe in one God or a supreme being. Mm -hmm. uh, in there's no, I don't see no uh, satanic. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to disagree with the satanic claim? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Was there any reason why you didn't believe in the conspiracy theory parts? I, just, I think it's it's all, most of the conspiracy theories are all um, just naysayers. And, uh huh. Okay. Anything else you want to say or add? Um, that there's a lot of uh, connections with Temp Knight Templar uh, between those two. Okay. That's it? That's it. Okay. Crazy? I think it's a cult. Okay. Because, like, um, you're going with us, you know, through the cults, and what separates those two is the a cult um, believes somewhat in God, right? Right. Not necessarily, but, but go ahead with what you're saying. Well, um, they use lots of Bible verses and everything like that, and so I feel like I feel like something's definitely off with them. Okay. Especially if the AG doesn't allow you to join. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there has to be like you know you can join uh, the Rotary Club, right? Uh, as long as it's not not a, a secret society. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't think it is. Now, see, the thing is, though, um, and I'll let you guys decide on this, they claim that they're not a secret society because they don't have hidden membership, okay? However, technically, they have, right? you know, there are different traditions, and I'm not sure if all of them follow the same traditions. I think it might be region-specific. Mm -hmm. um, how, region. However, I do want to add this. They do have secret rituals, so they could, it could be argued that they are a secret society. Does that... Change anything of what you just said or no? No, really. I just feel like they try to use the Bible a lot in what they do, uh -huh. and they twist a lot of it. And that's why I'm going more towards the cult than the cult. Because okay, so you said that they tw that they twist a lot of stuff. Like, give us like an example or, or anything that stuck out specifically to you. Well, like they believe, you know, like that they they say they believe in God. But yet they allow anybody to join, no matter what religion they are, um, as long as they believe in a god. Uh -huh. So, technically they don't believe in God as the only god because they believe in many gods. Right? It's a can of worms, but I don't think I want to answer it right now because I just want to focus on your guys' opinion. So. Yeah. Is that all you had to say? Yeah, 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 I guess. Okay, anything else? You sure? Okay. okay, Jack, what did you think? I think that it is a cult. Okay. Who claims no religious differences or okay. opinions. Um, 
But I think that it is a cult who dabbles in the occult. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to say a lot of things here, okay? <laughs> and so stop me if you have any questions. Because there's a, just a bunch of things that I was thinking when I watched the documentary. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong way. The first thing, some considerations that I had from the documentary itself. Um, o overall, I already talked to many of you guys about this. The History Channel, the historical <laughs> things that they say on the History yeah. Channel, you kind of take with a grain of salt. I yeah. mean, they kind of just have skewed things. And the documentary seemed like to me that it was kind of skewed in favor of Freemasonry. Now, I'm... I'm no, see, there, there's a thing. I'm not really into conspiracy theories, but it did seem like they had some kind of a lean towards in favor. Was I the only one who got that vibe? Yeah, no, it did. It, it kind of seemed like they weren't looking at it in an objective way. No, it was you know? towards you. Maybe it's my opinion. I don't know. Um, the next thing, um, some of the people mentioned uh, were definitely occultists. Like they mentioned about how the one guy, you know, who was trying to find out the imagery of the, the temple. It, he took that to weird places, but then he was also seeking different things like astrology to try and find answers. So definitely people in it are, are definitely using things of the occult. But does the thing itself, is it connected to the occult? Now, that's something I really weighed and I really was burdened with, with a lot. Another thing that you see is God is related to geometry, which is very, very common in, 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 the, in the cultic kind of things, where... God is 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 not necessarily a personal deity. He's more of a concept, a mathematical concept. And with Freemasonry, you definitely see that with the, the idea of geometry being the center of it all. God, God is geometry. You know, it kind of like that. And they don't outright say that, but yet the imagery is synonymous for each other. Yeah. The geometry is perfect, just like they, their idea of, of God. This is my perfect idea of God. So it's yeah. like, mm, I felt like that was a little bit too far on that. Because you claim not to be a religion, like Chuck was saying, but yet, yet you equate geometry with God. And and they might even argue this point, like, oh, no, we don't really do that. And it's like, well, but you do. your own teachings show that the, the G can stand for geometry or God, which is at the center of it. And you guys are all about symbolism, so try to explain that out. Of it. I don't really get that, but yeah. some people don't, don't really think that. Next is the unsure origins. We don't really know where they came from. That always bothers me. If you don't know where something comes from, it's like, oh, Okay, hold on, pause. See, I mean, like, the Bible says in Genesis that people started worshiping God shortly after Seth. Okay? But there wasn't really a religion, but gradually over time, religions got going. However, we know the origins of the law. Moses on Mount Sinai. We know the origins of, of, of Christianity. Jesus, when he died in Jerusalem, right. was resurrected, and his disciples carried it on 40 days after. We know this. See what I mean? Like, these are things where we know their origin, but this was based off of possibilities of what could have happened. And I felt like that was a little bit too... A little bit pushy. too ambiguous. I don't I don't believe we should ever join something that's ambiguous. No. I believe that Christianity is kind of against ambiguous things. You know, like the, the Gnostics that Paul was combating in the books of Timothy. Um, and then their purpose is kind of unsure. You know, they say, oh, we're here to help people become better people. How are the secret the, the secret rituals, how are those doing anything to make us better people? What we learned from them? Most of your people didn't even know what they were. So, I don't know. I wasn't buying it. I felt like they were trying to come off as not a cult. And I felt like they were trying a little bit too hard. Like, yeah. okay, so why do you do these things and why do you hide these things from, things from the public? We're not a secret society, but yet we have these secret traditions that you have to have be bound to us in brotherhood. Upon death. That's they're, kind of strong statements. <laughs> they're they're kind of like devil covering themselves. Yeah, I, I really felt like that. And and I feel like a lot of the conspiracy theories might be too far. Like, um, Freemasonry probably probably had something to do with, with, the, with the design of Washington, D.C. I'll totally admit that. Mm -hmm. As far as it being on the square thing, that sounded a lot like the new temple that Ezekiel mentions in chapters 40 through, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It sounded a whole lot like that. That you know, in the new heavens, the new earth, how they'll build the new, how God will, the new, he, the new city will come down. That kind of sounded a whole lot like that. So I was a little bit like, eh, that's weird. But that's not necessarily saying that's Freemasonry. He was in Freemasonry, but that might not have anything to do with Freemasonry itself. See, the great thing about Freemason being being secretive and stuff is they can distance themselves from a lot of things that look bad. Right. And so we're left with we're left with questions. Are they connected with the Knights Templar? Maybe. Maybe not. You don't know. 
Are they connected with Satanism? Maybe, maybe not. And so we have to keep a answering the same question over and over again. Well, maybe, it's maybe not. Like they, <laughs> they, if anybody mentioned those two things, yeah, they quickly. Yeah, it seems like they disappear. It, or yeah, and you know, bad bad reps can get started. I get that, you know, right. and sometimes you know just rumors and stuff. But still, worth thinking. Obviously, I mentioned this. The, the documentary seemed kind of skewed. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, if you notice throughout the commentary, they continually tried to show themselves as the victims. Yeah. Hiram was, was abused. Okay, first off, let's get something straight. Hiram was actually a king of a northern kingdom that Solomon did trade with. He was not one of the architects. No. Okay, so let's get that straight. Solomon was the one who designed the temple. Right. And... It, I believe it was had something to do with, with God's design and everything. I, I, I believe it, it says, I'm not positive about that part, but Solomon was the one who, who put, put, the, and put the stuff in order. David, David his father, started, the, started everything. He got the supplies for it. He, he started the work, but he wasn't able to do it because God prohibited him from because he, he had too much bloodshed. He right. said, you can't build my temple. Yeah. However, his son Solomon took those supplies, and then well, it still wasn't enough, so he had to do more trade with Hiram the king um, to get more. Um, so there is that, uh, but you know, all throughout the di we're we're just victims. Everybody thinks that we're something that we're not. Uh, our our great leader Hiram, even though there's no proof of him being our leader, whatever. Uh, uh, he he was he was unjustly murdered. Okay, Hiram. It never says Hiram was killed by in in the work. It never says that. So let's keep things in perspective here. That's complete myth. Okay. Next, we can only really trace Freemasonry and the guilds thereabouts to about the 1600s. Uh -huh, right. Basically, they were. They were trade, and the, you had a trade, and in, in this case masonry, and they formed guilds, and then from somewhere in there they got into like this weird secret society <laughs> thing where yeah. we have the Freemasons born. Right. That's as far back as we can logically and historically place it. Yeah. Placing any farther back, like back in Hiram's day, that's just nonsense. There's oh. there's no historical oh. proof of that. Um, and then also the whole secrecy thing seemed a little bit too far. Um, however, a note on, on Freemasonry, you cannot be communist no. to be in, in Freemasonry. Or, the idea of that is because you have to believe in, in you know, God, and the, the belief in communism kind of says, hey, there is no God, we need to do things kind of in a more socialist kind of way. And that's the, the idea of communism is based on no God. So I mean, so there is there is that, um, and then atheism. You obviously can't be an atheist because you have to have a belief in a god. So there are some people who are not allowed in in to join. Um, okay, so are Freemasons uh, cultists or part? Sorry, were you? Can I be atheist? Can I be atheist or communist? You got it. Okay, uh, so are Freemasons cultists or part of the occult? My answer is a little bit long, okay? <laughs> no way to know for sure. That's a really long answer, huh? <laughs> there really is no way to know for sure. Um, unless you join. Well, yeah. But then once you join, there's really no out. You're kind of a Freemasonry for, Freemason for life. For life. So um, on their buildings, so you might you notice... You can't tell if other people if they are one. Right. right. And so when the guy was like, I, I know because I, I talked to these high-ranking high people, they are sworn to secrecy. What are you not getting about this? It doesn't matter who you talk to. They are sworn to secrecy. They can only share so much stuff about it yeah. unless you're in it. But if you're in it, you can't share stuff about it because you're sworn to secrecy. So your word wow. means literally nothing in this. Right. You know, oh, the, the History Channel, we, we, don't, we, we aren't able to know exactly what's going on, but th they told us what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Idea. I'll believe that. Sure. So there, there. I mean, there is the element that it might be true. What they said might be true. However, right. we don't know. We don't know because they won't. We, exactly. Yeah. Um, you might see on some of their buildings AM, FM on it, or AM and FM, or AFM, or you know, different variations of that. It basically means accepted Mason or ancient Freemason. Okay. So FM is Freemason. AM is a accepted Mason. Um, AFM is ancient. Uh, ancient. I'm sorry. Ancient Freemason. And so the different AM, FM, that, there's just different variations of that. Okay? Right. Just so you know. Uh, what were you going to no. say? Oh, okay. Um, there's no real purpose for the existence of the Freemasons if you take it apart and just look at it for what it is. You take apart the whole secrecy thing, and you're left with why 
why? What are you doing? Yeah, what it, are what's you the doing? purpose? Like there, there really is no um, selling point for it. You know, the, the 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 secrecy is really its biggest hit point, and that's the very reason why you shouldn't join it is because you don't know. Um, so there's kind of that. Um, they claim to not be a religion, but yet let's 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 look at some of this. Okay, first off, one of the big things that they had was their people are kind of dressed like priests. Their their lodges are built like the temple. Right. So you have priests in a temple that's not a religion. I I didn't uh, find that overly yeah. selling. It just <laughs> left me with this unsettling feeling. Right. See what I mean? It just it didn't sit well with me. Um, they rely strongly on myths. When Paul himself wrote, "Don't get carried away with these people who are going on about the myths," and that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So. I think that's getting a little bit too hot. Huh. There we go. Okay. Um, then they had secret rit secret rituals. Now yeah. you can claim that this isn't religion, but a ritual at its definition is for ritual purposes. So I mean for religious purposes. So we're kind of at a loss there. What's the purpose of a ritual if not for religion? Religion. So I don't know. Um, next, they there was a lot of hidden powers. We do this for the hidden for the hidden knowledge of Freemasonry, for the hidden powers that would be granted to us. You know all the it's that's that's actually the definition of the occult: seeking hidden powers. The occult comes from a Latin word occultus, which basically means secret or hidden thing, right? So how is that? Good? <laughs> I, I don't know. There was just a lot of unanswered questions. Um, excessive symbolism. There's a lot of, of symbolism within uh, Freemasonry that just is, once again, unsettling. Remember when they were going through that temp that that, uh, that church, and they said that some of the ideas, they didn't even know what it meant necessarily? Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. <laughs> when, symbol when you have so much convoluted symbolism that you don't even know what it means, this is getting into dangerous territory. You know, and not, not necessarily bad, but just be careful. Okay. Um, another thing is relativism. That's very strong in Freemasonry, um, almost to the point of New Agey kind of stuff. Unite all the religions into one. It doesn't matter what you believe. And now, once again, they could say, well, we're just looking to make a, a friendly club where we all kind of join together. The AG prohibits me as a licensed minister to join the Freemasons because they say this. There is no good reason why you should join in a deep oath with someone who's not a Christian. Yeah. That's one of their things. And we're going to look more at that in just a second. But relativism is a big thing. Um, also, separation from other people doesn't bring unity. Huh. If your purpose is really to bring unity and progress in humanity, you don't separate yourself into a select group. The monks tried that. Oh. Hey, we're, we're going to try this new thing of, of being God's people by separating ourselves from everybody. Hmm, I don't think it works like that. In fact, I'm pretty sure that Jesus said the exact opposite. Go into all the world. And I'm pretty sure Paul said the exact same thing when he said, you would have to go out of the world if you wanted to do that. I, I told you to stay away from these people who are pretending to be Christians but are indulging in the flesh. Yes, you should be getting involved with the world. So it kind of leaves a lot of unanswered questions as to why. Um, possibly could be seen as a cultist, definitely, if you notice they had a baptism ritual. They had their own baptism ritual. The, the first rite, where you go down in death, and then you come back up in life. That's baptism. That is exactly the same ritual that the early Christians started with Jesus. They went into the water, you dunked down, you came back up. That was the exact same ritual. That's creepy, guys. They had their own baptism. That's creepy. You, you can call yourself... Baptized into, like... Right, like, it, that was kind of weird for, for me. I just felt really uncomfortable with that. Because the Bible talks about being baptized in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Freemasons. So <laughs> that really left me with a little bit of an uneasy uh, uneasy feeling, like there's something evil here that we're not sure of. I don't know. I could just be my own preoccupation, but I'm not comfortable with being baptized into anything other than Jesus. Were you going to say something? Okay. Um, and then they had their own little rituals. Now, that really bothered me because... the when Jesus died, he said it's free from the rituals, and these people are voluntarily taking on more rituals. Yeah, and I I don't know. I, I might be digging too deep, but that seems like a religion to me. I don't know. 
Um, a warning of secret societies. This is adapted from the Assemblies of God. Number one, activities in secret orders draw time away from church and ministry. You could be reaching people, but instead you're in your little club, your little club over there, doing, doing nothing. <laughs> now they encourage their members to get involved with the community. However, their meetings at the lodge don't really accomplish anything. Okay. Um, next, binding unity between people who are often not Christian, not a very smart thing to do. You, tend, don't, you don't take blood oaths with something that's not Christian. Not only that, but Paul even warned about this when he said, you can't be uniting with with people like this. And what it, his words were, um, I can't remember the, the imagery that he used, um, uh, unequally yoked. That's the, that's, the, that's the wording that he used. Don't be unequally yoked. Uh, which applies definitely more than to just marriage. He's talking about more than just marriage. He's talking about don't be don't be united with things that are that are unchristian stuff. So just apply that to marriage. Yeah, it, it is. And so I think business with non-Christians. Yeah, it, it could definitely apply to Freemasonry. Definitely. Um, the third thing, only relevant for a temporary physical improvement of the world. Freemasonry never talks about the soul and never talks about the eternal things, the things that are actually of, of utmost importance. It talks very briefly about making a very small impact on your community. And they do more talking about something than they actually do doing about that something. See what I mean? Um, so there is that. And then the fourth thing, it changes the perspectives of salvation to works. Everything in the Freemason, Freemasons is about works. And, and so when you get in that kind of attitude, you start... It starts changing your at your your not your thinking about it to works based salvation, which we know is is ludicrous. Um, also, there's there's the point that it's condemned by many churches. Uh, the Catholic Church obviously was the first one to condemn it, right. which is kind of an important detail. There you go, kind of an important detail. Um, uh, but then other other a lot of other churches were quick to hop on on board with that. In fact, many people have even lost their lost their um, place in the church, their membership in the church, because of their uh, refusal to leave uh, for their Freemasons. So, um, also a uh, last little point that that I kind of made here dwells in secrecy and shadow, relying on myths. Let's look at some some of what the Bible says uh, about these kinds of things. Uh, for instance, in Isaiah chapter nine, uh, verse two, when it says. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them his light shone. It never talks about darkness in a positive way. It talks about it as like a spiritual loss kind of way and to bring light to these kinds of situations. 49.9 says, um, Saying to the prisoners, come out to those who are in darkness, appear. They shall feel, uh, feed along the ways. On all bare heights shall be their pasture. So once again, the idea there is the exact opposite that the Freemasons are condoning. And lastly, in 1 Timothy, uh, chap if I can not flip past it here. There. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. That little CSB Bible, like where an entire book is on like one page. It's so easy to flip past it. <laughs> Uh, 1 Timothy 1, 4 says, um, nor, to, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. Now, obviously, Freemasons wasn't a thing back then, so he couldn't be directly combating that, but it definitely applies to Freemasonry. Um, so that takes us more broadly to the idea of the occult itself. What is the occult? Does anybody have any idea? What, what, what do you think is it considers to be part of the occult? I mean, just didn't we talk about the cult? The cult? What's the difference between that? I think more the occult deals with more of like Satanism. Okay. And more of the deeper darker things. Okay. So you just see in in your mind, occult is something that's like more dark, and cult is something that's more like twisted. I see cults more of just they don't have they don't think straight. Okay. Like, uh, distorted thinking. Okay. With the occult being more deep and dark. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Um, Looks like you're about to say something. Kind of, kind of like on the lines of the cult. I think of a cult as as if they think they believe in the Bible, and I see the occult as if they don't have anything to do with their Bible. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Anybody else? I think the occult is more, um, more like 
pagan or satanic rituals okay. and practices. Um, I think uh, things like Wicca and stuff, they're more considered a cult okay. than they are a cult. Right. Um, even New Age, I would say, has a lot of occultic feel to it. So. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. A lot of the cults that we looked at could technically be considered part of the cult too, like Scientology. Right. So yeah, sure. that's a good point, Jack. Very good point. Um, okay. Well, if you guys have anything else, like just raise your hand. Okay. Um, so this is this is a working definition. Some working definitions that I tried based off of Walter Martin's books and just kind of my own thinking. Okay. So, because I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of bring. Um, um, clarity. I'm not trying to contradict what you got your guys' definitions, okay? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with your guys' definitions. I'm just trying to help us to be on the same page. Um, so a cult could be defined in two ways. First off, a sect whose beliefs are not commonly held. They deviate from, from the wider belief system. Or a branch of a larger belief system which varies on key doctrinal points. Like, for instance, um, Jehovah's Witness would be considered a branch of a larger belief system. They're a branch of Christianity, right? right. Or a cult could be a, who are not commonly held, a, a minor variation. Like, for instance, let's say there's a cult that gets going uh, under a charismatic leader uh, based on UFOs. Well, that would technically be a cult. Yeah. See what I mean? Even though there's no bigger UFO church, <laughs> see what I mean? The, it, it's, it's something where the beliefs are not commonly held. It's it's a it's a small sect, okay. So those are kind of like a, a dual definition of cults. Um, uh, they oftentimes have a charismatic savior type. For Jehovah's Witness, there was Charles Russell. For Mormonism, it was Joseph Smith. For uh, Scientology, it was L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Yes, can't believe I forgot that. Um, and and so you really have it, it's a religious body of a type, right? It, it, you would even classify it maybe as a religion. Okay, but the occult isn't necessarily so easily defined. The occult is not really bound to any one religion. Um, occult means secret, in from Latin occultus. Um, so it's based on secret beliefs and practices which are not bound to any single religion. So as whereas a cult is more of based off of maybe a religion or, or forming a religion, an occult is more based off a of practice. Okay, that that's really as far as it's easier. If, if you relate that, occultic would be like practices, uh, witchcraft and, and, and Satanism and, and astrology. These would be considered part of the occult, right? Because it's, it's more, of a, more of a dark practice right. with secret knowledge and that kind of stuff. But they do have their own beliefs on a lot of different things, like witches don't believe the same thing as Satanists, for instance. Right. Okay? Uh, so it, it, the, the definition isn't perfect, but that's just to help you kind of… See the difference, okay? Think when you think of a cult, think of a, of a small sect with with, with a, usually a savior type figure, leader, right. okay? When you think of the occult, think of more. Uh, I think I like Nicole's thing, kind of like the darker practices darker. and stuff. And and some of them do have their own beliefs, but the practice itself kind of transcends the different beliefs. For instance, a, a Satanist might do the same occultic thing as a witch w might do, hypothetically. Right. Let's say, for instance, they both do the do astrology, for instance. See what I mean? So technically, they both be part of the cult, but however, that example is kind of bad because witches are are, are cultists, anyways. So <laughs> um, really, there there sometimes it's hard to make a distinction. You know, like you could be a witch and part of a cult, for instance. <laughs> um, so studying the cult is different than studying various cults. Definitely. Now, I do want to give this warning as we get on the beginning of our of our d discussion of the occult. Um, be very careful. Don't study anything too closely, and if you start realizing yourself getting an unnatural um, desire to know more or obsession, yes, yeah. uh, pull yourself back and, and just stay in the Word, stay in prayer, and just kind of pull yourself back in, okay? Because s demons are very, um, very smart. P oftentimes in the Christian world, you know, they, they're portrayed as just these big dummies. They've been working on their craft for thousands and thousands right. of years. They have perfected it. Right. Like, they know how to spot your weaknesses, and although they can't read your minds, they are still pretty smart, yeah. and they can kind of just guess, mm -hmm. you know. 
I can see that it looks like this is this guy's weakness. I got this. See what right, I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> so so just be careful with saying that call. Don't get too deep. Kind of bring yourself back in. Don't go um, buying Ouija boards. Don't, don't go buying Ouija boards, boards and tarot cards and stuff right. to better understand it. No. <laughs> Stay in the word. Okay. So. Um, let's talk about the truth about the cult. I want to start off with a quote by C.S. Lewis from the Screwtape Letters. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. You see a lot of people doing this, especially in America. You know, they, they don't exist, right? Just deny it exists and hopefully it'll all go away. Um, the other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. You see this too. You see this too. Very much so you see this. In fact, you see people in the church doing this. Um, I saw something on, on Facebook, uh, before that was basically, um, without giving away too much details about it, uh, the person was basically commanding the Holy Spirit to do things. And it's like, well, you uh, cross the line there. You don't really tell the Holy Spirit to do anything. No. He kind of tells you what to do, and then <laughs> you kind of say, okay, let's do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, a, a big uh, thing there. But it's, it's oftentimes based on this, where people will call themselves Christians, but they still have an unnatural drawing to the hidden things, you know. You know, you, secret hidden prayers that we pray, secret hidden power of the Holy Spirit. You, a lot of Christian, modern Christian books are about this, finding the secret power in God's presence, you know, secret things. And it's like, mm, make sure it is actually is in the Word, because they'll really yank things out of there context. Was a book, um, well, you know, there was that book, The Secret. Yeah, which was actually New Age, but then, whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a lot of Christians were reading it. They were. Yeah. <laughs> um, then you had some Christian authors who started writing, like, the secret power of speaking God's word. Yeah. And, and you know the thing right is, after that. it all seems like it's new, but it's all repackaged yeah. stuff. All of it is repackaged stuff. Um, they themselves are equally pleased by both errors, the demons. Um, and hell, a materialist or a magician with the same delight. A materialist is someone who believes that there is no supernatural... Um, and obviously a magician is one who's overly involved in the supernatural. Um, so, during the, uh, doubting the occult doesn't change its existence. That's just how it is. The occult is still present whether you accept it or deny it. Some people nowadays deny that people can be demon-possessed. That, that's cute, but people can be demon-possessed. Um, secondly, um, seeking it even accidentally is foolish. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing. It's still foolish. If you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it, honestly. Um, we're going to talk about a few different ways that people, whether we accidentally, unintentionally seek the occult. And I, I, I myself have found myself uh, guilty of these things, so I'm not going to speak with condemnation to you guys. I'm going to say what I have learned from studying the Word. God doesn't. God didn't say the demonic had no power. He just said to stay away from it. See, a lot of Christians think they're all frauds, right? All the tarot card readers, all the witches, they're all frauds, right? No, God never said that they were all frauds. Yes, a lot, of, a lot of people are frauds, but there's a lot of Christian frauds too. The people who masquerade as Christians who are on, who are televangelists even, that are proclaiming pro, uh, prosperity of peace and, and, and wonder when that's exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. Um, we, we're actually talking about this. Um, Christian astrologists who think that they can say when the end is based off the stars alignment, <laughs> based on based on the red moons. That's astrology, guys. They may call themselves Christians, like even John Hagee has done this, where you call yourself a Christian, but you look to the stars for the future. That's astrology. That's astrology. It, well, we're doing it because the Bible says this. Look, the Bible doesn't say look at to or trust in the stars. It says this is my word, and it says don't seek the stars. Seek me. Should a people not seek their God? Is actually the exact thing that he says in Isaiah. So... Uh, very much so he tells us to stay away from it. Even though, now understand this, demons will give secret knowledge to you. They will tell you things that you did not know. They will even tell you things that you wanted to know. They will do that because they want to captivate your attention. But God still said, even if what the demon said was true, he still said, don't do it. That's the end of the conversation. Don't do it. When your parents said, don't touch the oven, did they mean don't touch the oven, or did they say, wait till I turn my back and then touch the oven? <laughs> See what I mean? Like, right. God said, don't do it. The occult seeks to open the door to another unnatural dimension, the secret things. Um, demons do not reside in our dimension of space. We, do, we reside in the physical dimension of space. They reside in another dimension of space that is not the same dimension as heaven. It's a different dimension. 
and they can reach through to our dimension. And the thing is, think of it like a door, and the handle's on your side. Mm -hmm. When you get involved with the occult, you open the door. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? It's kind of like the Pandora's box effect, okay? Mm -hmm. Once you open that door, it's going to be harder and harder to get out the more you get yourself involved. This is why I continually tell people, do not watch you know, movies that have demonic stuff in them, like The Exorcist and stuff. Don't do it. Because what's going to happen is, is it draws you more and more. I, I, I advise people, do not own Ouija boards, even for instructional purposes. You know, uh, don't, um, don't, don't buy tarot cards. Don't look at tarot cards. Don't get involved with these things. Um, and I always tell people the same thing every single time. Uh, because um, I personally believe that it's just not personally believe. The Bible does definitely say that it is not a good idea. So Deuteronomy 18, uh, 9 through 12 says, When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination, which astrology is part of divination, and divination is an encompassing term. Uh, it talks about a lot of different things. Um, they would take the um, liver and the, I want to say gallbladder from animals, and that would tell the future that way. Maybe it's the intestines, I don't, I don't remember. Um, or tells fortunes, or interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an, is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. Because they have done these things, I'm actually going to just go ahead and kick them all out. However, Israel failed in this task, so that's for a different night. James 4, 7. Uh, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Very much so a promise that applies to the cult. Very much so. So, uh, demons are not sticklers for rules. They don't care what you say you believe. They don't. They don't care if you believe that all are equal or if you believe that there's only one God. They don't They don't really care. You can believe whatever they want. That's the, one of the big selling points of demons. They let you keep your beliefs. They just influence you. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they will use personal beliefs such as if you believe in ghosts, they will appear as a ghost. If you believe things can be haunted, they will convince you that that thing is haunted. They've made entire TV shows about this. This place is haunted. This thing is haunted. Oh, there was a ghost. Yeah, because that's what you believe, so the demons will reveal themselves in that way. They don't care, as long as your attention is on them and not God. That's all they care about. In seances, they'll show up as your dead relatives. Why? Because they want you to partake of the thing that God told you not to do. They want your attention. They want your your you to uh, you know our limbo. If you believe in limbo, they'll have they'll have it where, where things will come by to, to affirm that. Uh, they'll have it where during seances, people will come back. Like they might have someone who claims to be Jesus who comes back from the dead and says, "Hey, no, I wasn't really the Christ. I never claimed to be the Christ. I just was, you know, I was just a nice person. I tried to encourage people." Well, I heard it from Jesus' own lips that he was not the Christ. No, it was a demon who called himself the Christ. See what I mean? You have to you have to pay attention to what the Bible says because demons will lie. I don't, I don't know why this confuses people. Demons lie. Well, I I know for a fact. Let me give you a hypothetical. Let's say aliens come down from the sky. Aliens in an actual spaceship. Actual aliens, okay? And they say, we are enlightened individuals. And we know the ways of truth. Your, your religions are holding you down. This is the way of truth. Well, then that's demonic. But no, 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 you don't understand because these were demons from another world. I mean, these were uh, angels from... Aliens. aliens from another world. You don't understand. If it contradicts the word, it's demonic. Right. But no, how could it be demonic if it's an alien? Maybe it's an angel, and maybe it's a demon presented, pretending to be an alien. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just throwing, throwing out ideas here. But the point being, if it contradicts this, is not true. Right. See what I mean? It, that confuses people because they think, for whatever reason, that demons play fair. Demons do not play fair. No. Um, or if you believe in reincarnation, they'll come, they'll they'll try and get you to do memory, uh, what's it called, uh, regression, where you try and find a hidden memory, and so they'll place the hidden memory back from a previous life in your head, and then you'll be you'll you'll find that hidden. Oh, I remember this happening. Deja vu, you know, and they'll they'll affirm your beliefs because that's what you want to believe. Deja vu, by the way, all deja vu is is as your brain experiences things, you build up. Uh, it's kind of like a neural pathway in your brain, okay? And whenever you encounter something that's similar to something you've already experienced, it can cause a feeling of euphoria or um, 
Yeah, that's good enough for now. Uh, and so as a result, you have this – oh, I've been here before. No, there are similarities that your brain is, is, is clicking. Hey, this is similar. See what I mean? It has nothing to do with the past life. Nothing to do with reincarnation. <laughs> but for whatever reason, people want to believe in reincarnation, so now it's about reincarnation. Um, they also don't believe uh, – they also use your, your ignorance. Uh, misquoting scripture. Did you know demons quote scripture? Mm -hmm. They did it to Jesus. They'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me to do this because the Bible says this. Well, read the whole context because demons will do that. Okay, I am God's special anointed prophet. I remember being in heaven before I was born. And I remember God asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do this. And so he put me in a body and I, and I remember that that was my, my old life in heaven. I'm secretly an angel in a, in a human body. <laughs> no, but seriously, people yeah. claim these kinds of things. Okay, yeah. how do you know that they're not telling the truth? Because the word oh. says they're not telling the truth. Okay, <laughs> the Bible says very distinctly we were created in our mother's womb. Okay, so we know that already he's wrong. Yeah. Next, the Bible says that it's appointed man for man wants to die, and then the judgment. So we know that he didn't have his Americanated. See what I mean? You, you can't just take parts. Next, they mix match religions. They're all about mix matching religions. That's why you see a lot of Christians who are into, into the occult. Because I believe in God, but that's exactly what the prophets said. You are serving God and Molech. You're serving God, but not him alone. They said this very same thing. Um, I believe one example is in Micah, but I, I was reading a lot of the prophets today, so there's a little blur as to which one started and which one ended. I read from... Um, Micah all the way through to, to Malachi, so that's like seven prophets. I don't remember which prophet said what, guys. I just remember what was said. Um, uh, astrology. You know, hey, astrology isn't that bad. You see a lot of Christians involved in astrology. But still, and they'll all do all this for their goals. Um, to those who play, demons always play back. Remember that. When you play with the Ouija board, you might not get an answer the first couple times. But I guarantee you, you keep seeking it, eventually you will. Um, very self-centered, often uses Christian ideas, slightly twisted. Okay, One of the um, easiest ways to tell if it's genuine is whether it's self-centered or God-centered. Read a lot of the Christian books today and see that the entire focus is on self. You being happy, your riches increasing, not so that you can bless others, so that you can name it and claim it. Um, uh, what's another example? Um, you know, hey, you need to get a divorce because it, it's not a good situation for you. Uh, you need to do this for you, for you, for you. Watch out for you. Nobody else will. Uh, you know, do this for you, you, you. Self-centered Christianity. That's not Christianity. Christianity, by definition, is not self-centered. Um, so is it God-centered or self-centered? Because demons use Christian ideas and twist them. They use Christian terminology and twist them. You remember we looked at this in the cults. It's the exact same thing in the occult. Because we talked about this in uh, Timothy, how he says that these are the doctrines of the demons. Okay, so um, I'm not being tempted. I, I I'm not involved with the occult. Let's look at a few different things. Shows, Game of Thrones, which magnifies sex. If you guys have ever seen Game of Thrones, oh my gosh, guys, they made they made actually a, a video <coughs> clip of season one's sex scenes, and it was like 15 minutes long. It was insane. Mm. Yeah. And then they did the best of, because they're at like season 7 or 9 or 8 or something yeah, like that. 7. 7? Okay, so they're on 7. So it's the best of, you know. So then you've got like a 30-minute video of different sex scenes from <laughs> 7 seasons. Um, that's that's demonic. Anything that glorifies immoral sex, that's demonic. Uh, ghost shows, you see this all the time. In fact, there's a lot of people who claim to be, uh, they're like televangelists, except they're not really, uh, they're, they're not, they don't claim to be Christian. You know, they claim to be, they know it all about ghosts. Right, these ghost shows, you know, um, and even some people ha have taken on the stupid, stupid idea that they're gonna try and catch the ghosts on screen. <laughs> when you play with the devil, he plays back. Bad idea, guys. Don't be messing with the occultic yeah. things. <laughs> Don't be messing with the occultic things. Well, this house is haunted, so we're gonna see if we if we see anything. Stay away. <laughs> Don't get involved with these kinds of things. These are bad ideas. These are stupid ideas. <laughs> Uh, the world glorifies it, but they're stupid nevertheless. Horror movies. Not all horror, horror movies. I understand that some are considered thrillers, like, for instance, where the FBI is trying to catch the, the secret killer. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about movies that have demonic themes in them. Okay, like The Exorcist. The, uh, the Exorcism. What? The Conjuring. 
Yes, The Conjuring, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Things that have demonic themes in them. Uh, even some things that don't necessarily have demonic themes that are just have dark themes. I would warn against those ones, too. Because... You start dabbling, you, you start losing yourself. The new movie that just came out like last year, I believe, was Ouija. Yeah. You know, yeah. so just watch out for these. Adventure Time. Um, this is so heavily trenched in New Age philosophy that it's hard to even know why it's called a children's show and not a New Age brainwashing show. I don't even I don't even get this. They have astral projection where you leave where your spirit leaves your leaves your body. They have reincarnation. They have um oh what's that other one? Tarot cards. They have um uh, astrology. They have um, God isn't really a God. He's just a reincarnated being that keeps reincarnating, uh, and his name's Glob in that one. So, uh, <laughs> see, what I mean, uh, uh, New Age themes, but masquerading as a child show, and and people around here let their kids watch this. See what I mean? Well, how did it start? Well, you go back and watch season one, and it's not really influenced by the cult, it seems like, at all. But then you get to, like, season six or seven, five or six, and you're like, whoa, this got weird. Well, it was a gradual progression, because that's yeah, how you brainwash people. Slap you with it. Yeah. Right. All at once. Yeah. yeah. Um, another show, Avatar The Last Airbender. This is, like, solid Hinduism. If you study Hinduism and then you watch Avatar The Last Airbender, it's basically they took Hinduism and turned it into something that you watch. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Avatar is actually a th actually a thing in, in Hindu belief. Um, reincarnation is there. They have the they have the whole be emptying of yourself, the exact like in Hinduism. They have the different uh, spirit animals and stuff. I mean, it's just everything is there. Once you study the religions, you think, wow, the, how how is this even allowed on TV? Right. You know, yeah. um, <clears throat> secret things, secret things like for instance, pornography masquerades itself as a secret thing. Your wife doesn't have to know. Cheating. Your wife doesn't have to know. Your husband doesn't have to know. You know, these are secret things, secret pleasures, um, gossiping and greed, things that nobody has to know. They're, they're secret pleasures, right? These are these are definitely don't don't make no mistake. Gossip and these kinds of things are demonic. Okay. Oftentimes we think of demonic as only being things like tarot cards, but it encompasses more. If you're gossiping about people behind their backs, that is a work of the devil, and he's very happy to have you do it. No. See what I mean? Don't don't get sucked into gossip. If you're talking about somebody else, stop. Okay. If somebody else is talking about some, about somebody else, stop. Walk away. Tell them to stop. Do something, but don't just sit there and listen. <laughs> See what some Christians say is, oh, I, I, God's called me to be a sounding board. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong again. Um, practices, astrology, and horoscopes. Oh, it's not that bad. It's just not that. It's you know, it's not that big of a deal. I just share it on my Facebook, you know, whatever is not the big... Yeah, it is. God said not to do it. That's exactly what you're doing. We need to stop calling things something else to justify it in our own lives when it is demonic. It is wicked. We're, the thing is, we enjoy doing it, so we seek to justify it. You know? Uh, Premarital sex. It, everybody's doing it. It's not the big... And it's not like I'm gay. Okay, do you understand how sexual immorality works? I mean, God condoned this type of sex. One man, one woman... In marriage. Well, we're one man, one woman, but we're not married. Then you have no right to be having sex. It's not that complicated of an idea. Like, why do we overcomplicate things just to justify our own sin? Um, Non-traditional relationships such as homosexuality, such as bestiality, such as etc., etc., etc. In fact, this is in a lot of uh, science fiction shows. You know, where there'll be incestual relationships. We're our brother or sister. It's the future. Things are different. It's like, well, that's yeah. always pretty gross. Just something out there. And by the way, incest isn't a new thing. The Egyptians did actually quite a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I always just tremble. <laughs> I actually kind of hate reading that passage. I kind of sometimes just skip it because I know it's there. And yeah, it's like, I know what's uh, going to happen there. <laughs> they're going to, yeah. yeah. He, he gets drunk, they have sex. We get two, two nations. Yeah. I got it. Got it. <laughs> um, another thing you see a lot in science fiction shows, e e in the future, everybody's gay. Wow. Everybody's gay. <laughs> yeah. you know, and there's girls kissing girls, and they're bi, too. Why not? Let's have sex with everybody. You know. Uh, it's on everything. It's, it goes on the joke science fiction shows, like Rick and Morty. It's on the serious ones, like, um, what is it called? The 300? I forget which one. Is it 300 or 4400? I'm confused. Or 100. It's 100. 
I don't know. It is one of them. Oh, um, the yeah, okay, the 100. Okay, 300 is a movie about the Spartans. Yes. 4,400, I don't even know what that one's about. I've watched it many times, I still don't know what it's about. And then the 100 is about, like, something to do with the future. I don't know, whatever. But anyways, everybody's having sex. Um, so then attitudes that, that the demonic can oftentimes uh, do in. First off, rebellion. The prophet Samuel even said that rebellion and stubbornness is as like the sin of witchcraft. Well, I'm not I'm not with the Ouija board. You have a rebellious heart, and you're being very stubborn in your ways. You are practicing sin that is as like, similar to the sin of witchcraft. When we start letting rebellion in our hearts, start opposing God's authority, when we start being stubborn in our hearts and prideful, we are opening the door to the demonic in our lives. But I'm not using a Ouija board. But your heart is... Yeah, what are you not getting here? You see what I mean? We excuse things in our lives because that's my thing and I don't want to let that go. It's okay for me. Were you going to say something? Yeah, well, I was going to ask something. Sure. What do you think about the fortune cookies? Um, I honestly don't see any harm to some of them um, because it's more of a joke thing. Uh, like for instance, some people believe in it. Yes, they oh, yeah. yes. Assume something's gonna happen you can take it day. too far. Yeah, and and so then there's two questions that you would ask. First off, what is your view of it? Because that definitely changes it. And then saying off, was the fortune cookie written to be a fortune, or was it written as a joke? Because if you go to different places, some of them will be an obvious joke. Yeah. Like uh, I think I was at Bamboo Garden, for instance, and it was all like. Um, the sun will come out today or something. It was like, you know, it was a joke. It wasn't like, but then there are some that actually seek to be mystical and stuff. So you will have to go by two things, your conscience and the intent. Mm -hmm. If something intends to be fortune telling, don't read it. You can eat the cookie and just throw the fortune away. You know what I mean? Um, uh, or well, I don't if, have a problem with it. I was just okay. Wondering what uh, or if somebody has a problem with it, just tell them not to eat the fortune cookie. I mean, you don't, you can ask, you can give it back to the restaurant. They don't care if you eat the fortune cookie. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it goes by that. It, so those two questions: uh, your conscience foremost. Does, is the Holy Spirit telling you to stop this? Because if so, just stop it. Right. I'm not saying listen to your conscience and everything. Well, my conscience says it's okay to look at pornography. You know, I'm talking about if you're doing something and the Holy Spirit starts convicting you to stop doing it. Then stop doing it. There was actually an episode of the Andy Griffiths show. That talked about that? Well, where Aunt B, she goes into business, this Japanese restaurant. Yeah. Okay? And she does it because she reads the fortune cookie. Uh-huh. And <laughs> then everything just goes terrible with it. And not like the fortune. And she gets all upset. And the guy's like, my wife writes those in the back. You know, like... <laughs> You believe that? <laughs> That's like, but so then also there's the intent. Take it. Yeah. yeah it's but then also there's the intent too, because like Ouija boards, for instance, was intended as a child's game. Yeah. So it's not only the it's not only the the intent. It's actually the idea of the thing too. So you kind of have to you just be smart about it. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever you guys do, just think about it. Make sure it has a biblical basis. Then do that. Right. I mean? So um, I read them. As a joke, because we always get a good laugh out of it. Oh, yeah. you I know. always throw in in the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, actually, some fortune cookies I know are more of like a, a written at a, as a Christian thing, where they'll be like, you know, um, yeah. find a, fi find a way to uh, find a way to bless others today. Where it's not really a fortune cookie; it's more of a word of encouragement. Yeah. Right. And then I would say, go ahead, and that's fine. Yeah. You know, but um, so the ad, ad, okay, and then pride. I already mentioned it. Uh, music. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even want to start m mentioning this because whew, there's so many lyrics out there that glorify that cult. For instance, um, Katy Perry had a song, uh, "Dark." I think it was called "Dark Horse." Uh, real strong on occultic imagery. If you watch the music video, real strong occultic imagery. She was actually had broken up with a guy who was in the occult. So obviously, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, and she's one who claims to be Christian on a lot of things, and then does her own thing on a lot of other things. So it's like. Yeah. It's she's like one of those um, weekend Christians where she's a Christian this time and then you meet her again in a year and she's like I'm not a Christian. Right. So um, and demonic themes, you know, you got to just watch out for what music you're listening to. You know, um, uh, games. I was playing a game called Dishonored, a very good game. By the way, it was very fun. However, it was drenched in the occult. Uh, uh, it had a lot of charms and that kind of stuff in it. Um, so as a result, I'll never own the game. And you know, I, when I was playing it, I was like. I shouldn't be playing this. To my shame, I still finished it because it was a very fun game, and I do feel bad about that. I shouldn't have done that. However, I did do that, so I could lie to you guys about it. Or I could be real. I did finish the game, and it was a very fun game. I'm not gonna lie. 
However, with all things considered, it was very much known to the cult. So, mm -hmm. there's that. So, you have to watch out. I'm not being tempted by the cult, are you, though? Uh, are you? I highly doubt that, that Satan is just letting you live your life. Highly doubt that. Highly doubt that. What? It's just it's all around. Yeah, it is. And the thing is, I've had to give up a lot of shows that I really liked. Oh, really liked. Oh, man. A lot of video games I had to give up, too. Oh, movies. I used to watch movies that he had, like, you know, bad words in it. I mean, they didn't bother me. I'm like, oh, well, just... But then it started convicting you? I'm like, five minutes in, and I'm like, I don't want to see the rest of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. It's like... And that's a good thing, you know. It's disgusting. It's like... I can't, uh, no, I can't watch another movie. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is our modern television came, evolved from, from, yeah. um, from theater. Yeah. And in, in the Greek theater, there was so, so much immorality. Like, yeah. so many yeah. things. <laughs> you want to talk about gross sex scenes, let's talk about gross sex scenes. Yeah. <laughs> let's not. Yeah. So, signs of the cult. Um, supernatural powers. Obviously, these are from Satan, obviously, but they claim to be from other things. Your your inner self, your spirit animal, um, uh, dead ancestors, uh, fill in the blank. Uh, false prophets, they will, oh my gosh. They will say things are from God or from a God without them actually being from God. They'll attribute it to the Holy Spirit without it being from the Holy Spirit. And I do want to give a word of warning. If you're doing something that you have convinced yourself is right, that the Bible says is wrong, and you've convinced yourself that it's okay, do not ever say, God told me to do this. Yeah. Because what you're doing is you're attributing something as that is unholy to the perfect and holy one. Right. And that is blasphemy. I don't know what other people have told you. Don't yeah. do that. Okay? Um, I, I did want to – I actually forgot to say this. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Diana brought up the thing about the um, – we were talking about the communion, remember? Oh. Um, do you know why you're not supposed to eat the communion unless you're a Christian? That is blasphemy. Because it, it took the place over the Passover. And the Passover was only supposed to be celebrated by the Jews. Or someone who um, was circumcised that became part of the Jewish body. Um, and you would, if if they let the lamb sit overnight, they would incur judgment. If they didn't do it when God told them to, they would incur judgment. Um, and if they weren't uh, circumcised and part of the Jewish body, they would incur judgment from God, and even to the point of death. So the communion took that place of of the Passover. We wouldn't do the Passover anymore, but we do communion. So for someone to take communion without being a Christian, they're basically heaping on themselves judgments from God. And Paul even attributed in 1 Corinthians that people were even dying and getting sick from taking the communion without being pure. So remember that when you're taking communion. Um, you know, what I always do is I always just check my heart. Check your heart real quick. You know, is there something in me that I'm doing? Repent of it before you take the communion because, you know, it is definitely something the Bible warns about. So anyways, uh, third thing, uh, <clears throat> Very influential of people, especially people in power. Like you see this in Scientology, for instance. Um, oppose those who preach the word. Do anything to prevent seekers. And you see a lot of people who call themselves Christians do this. Oh, that pastor over there, he's a no good. Is what's the purpose to what you're saying? It does nothing but tear up the tear up the tear up the uh, the body. Um, and detour people from faith in God, obviously, you know, get them sidetracked on anything. Oh, I'm still worshiping God, but not God alone. Um, however, the cult is limited in power and knowledge. The demonic does not know everything, and they can't do anything. Remember that. God is still in control, and God is still the only all-knowing one. Um, and just now, okay, this is something I do want to say. It's not real just because it appears real. Okay? What do you do if... A demon, I mean, sorry, if a dead ancestor appears to him, you touch him. You touch your dead ancestor, and they know everything about you, about your relationship. They sound the same. They look the same. You felt them with your own two hands. Well, you know it's a demon. But no, it sounded just like them. It, it's a demon. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Your experience doesn't tr trump truth. 
What if an alien comes down in a saucer tomorrow, is on the news, and everybody's talking about how this is God, this is the one who created who created the heavens and the earth? <laughs> I'm not, seriously, ask yourself this. An actual physical alien in a spaceship lands on the Earth and claims to have created Earth. Well, you know it's a demon. Do you know what I mean? Like, your experience doesn't trump truth. Truth is truth. Okay? So, just because someone experienced something real doesn't make it true. A dead relative at a seance who says that he is not in hell or heaven but at peace with the universe. Uh, you'll see oftentimes people at, seance, people at seances will do this. Oh, well, you know, uh, hell didn't really exist. It's just, a, I'm just at peace. It just, join us, we're at peace. See what I mean? Well, it's a lie. Uh, so the promise of the cult, a cult brings a promise of pleasure. I'll add their knowledge of the future. Comfort. Um, w which is oftentimes found through the power of relativism. The knowledge of the future through astrology and those kinds of things. Love, which is actually unrestrained pleasure. It's not love at all. It's just sexual immorality. A uh, fake work of the Holy Spirit, oftentimes attributing it to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Don't forget that. This was like um, when the Pharaohs. Exactly. Christians exactly. Could like do that. everything yes. that Moses could do, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which is why the Pharisees were, in, were did such a big no-no. They knew that wasn't of Satan because it was a good thing that Jesus was doing. And had they simply, you know, paid attention, the Holy Spirit was testifying for himself that it was the work of the Holy Spirit. But the Pharisees didn't want to hear because they didn't want to lose their grip. See what I mean? And uh, so they, as a result, uh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Uh, a fake Jesus, something that sounds good. Uh, oftentimes the cult will say, Jesus was a Christ, but there are many Christs. God is in all of us. Things like that. You just have to find your inner Christ. You have to find your inner oneness with the, with the universe. You have to empty your soul. You have to empty your brain. Th these are the ideas of the cult, guys. They're That's all around us. They're all in our culture. One of the first things they start telling you when you get into like the New Age meditation is clear your mind yeah. of everything. Exactly. Know, focus on the oneness within. Yeah. And notice that the Bible never says to empty... Your mind. It says to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And to put your mind on things above. Yeah. Be renew and have the renewing of your mind, not the draining of your mind. <laughs> right. there, there's a very big difference there. Yeah, um, a yeah. uh, fake Jesus because they will show you a Christ. It just won't be Jesus. Yeah. They'll even call it Jesus. In fact, in Second Corinthians, Paul, Paul writes about this. A, a Christ that was not the Christ that we talked. In fact, Second Corinthians 11:4. Let me just turn there. Did you guys ever hear about that um, guy that was pretending to be Jesus in Texas about like two years ago? Well, there was one uh, in Taos, rich. New Mexico. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh, for if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you readily accepted, you put up with it readily enough. See, he's saying that these things do exist. There are other Jesuses out there, and they all have their origin with Satan. You know, so we have to be wise to these things. It's something that sounds good, secret knowledge, but forbidden by God. Uh, victory over death and removal of sin by denying it. See, the occult denies the power of the grave. The grave has no sting. When the Bible says the exact opposite, death did have a sting. Jesus just defeated that. Uh, those in the occult are usually oblivious to their false beliefs because the demonic fools them and plays on the rebellion of God. For instance, people holding a seance, they might actually genuinely believe that they're calling up dead ancestors. They might actually genuinely believe it. People into astrology, they might actually believe that the stars hold the future. They might actually believe this. You have to accept that just because somebody's in the cult doesn't mean that they know any better. They might have never heard the name of Jesus, for instance. They might have t taken their instructions from, from the demons. They might have asked, asked at a seance, who is this Jesus? And of course the demons are going to say something like, he was a liar. Well, so what are they going to base anything else off of okay so jesus was a liar right that's what the spirit said it was there when jesus died you know I, we talked this was the roman soldier who, who killed jesus how how much would he i mean why wouldn't he know let's call it peter from the grave and see what he says you know oh no peter jesus never claimed to be you know, see what i mean because demons lie mm -hmm. they 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 do things that look 
right and sound right and feel right, but aren't right. How do you know that it's not right? This is literally the only way to know. Because what happens is it starts talking to you and you start listening and you think of this Holy Spirit convicting your heart. And it's not the Holy Spirit. But it sounded so good. It sounded so true. How do you know? It's tricky, guys. It really is. I'm not lying. But you got to stay in the Word and stay in prayer. Um, irrational, relativistic, emotion-based culture that can't discern. That's why our culture is so sucked into this. Okay. Out of one side of the mouth, they say that there is no God. And then on the other side, they say that the, that the stars hold the future, that there are ghosts, that there are... I'm sorry, you're denying the supernatural, but then you're denying, I and mean, then you're accepting the supernatural in another area? It's like, it doesn't make sense. It's irrational. Um, it's relativistic. Whatever you want to believe is whatever is true. I mean, hey, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever you want to believe. Uh, emotion based. If it's feelings, if you feel it, it is true, and that's just how it is. You see, and see these things are all lies, but that's what our culture believes. Um, are you good, Diana? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, just some real quick here. Um, Genesis 4.26, people began calling on God, but sometime after that, because of the rebellion, uh, it caused people to change the image of God to how they wanted to see him. But as they changed the image of God, there was faulty things in God. Now they didn't. They had a God who wasn't able to help them, so they created multiple gods. Sinful views of God led to their belief in multiple gods. And then, as politics, relativism, and sin continued to influence culture, eventually demons drew people closer with false doctrines. It was a progressive thing. So they went from believing in God and walking with God to sinning. So then they started seeking God, but then they started making their own religions. And then politics got involved, where kings started claiming to be the priest and the king. This is actually very common in ancient culture. Um, you know, stuff like that, where it was a political game. Relativism, where, you know, this is just whatever you want to do. You know, it just eventually got its claws in. And, and then the false idea that everyone is doing it. To where now you have entire cultures that, that, that showed up. You know, like in Mesopotamia with the Babylonians, for instance, an entire culture that accepted astrology as a normal practice. The Babylonians were very big on, 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 on astrology, okay? Um, and everybody was doing it. So, I mean, hey, the Egyptians did it too. Why not? So, uh, there aren't demons everywhere. I do want to say that, but they are still present. Uh, in the modern age, people endorse Christianity while being involved in the occult. They don't see uh, that they don't see that that's wrong. You know, hey, I can do both. Um, there are, so once again, there are not demons everywhere, but they are still present and they are still influencing things. Okay, there is a balance between finding them everywhere and, and seeing that they are definitely in play. Um, <clears throat> so this is how people are open to the cult. Usually, personal experience is primary. What you want to believe is is primary. Um, there was one guy who was a Christian who lost his son. I believe his son was. Uh, I want to say it was like. Eight or ten or somewhere around there, and um, he started getting involved with the cult for any way to be able to talk to, talk to his son one more time. He ended up abandoning the faith, obviously, as everyone does eventually when they get involved in the cult. And uh, if you allow the cult in your house through movies, through anything like that, through instruments like the Ouija board, you are asking, you are asking for your spiritual life to die. Okay, you are literally asking to be separated from God. God is definitely not okay with it. Um, people think that they can have things like idols in their house and it's not going to affect them. It's not true. You can't have things in your house and it's just not going to affect you. You are going to be affected. It's going to draw you away from God. Um, the biblical truth is oftentimes quoted even in the occult. Okay, Even in the occult, the Bible is still oftentimes quoted. Okay, There are people who condone astrology by seeing that the Bible did it. Seances. Well, it's in the Bible. Uh, and all kinds of different things like that because it's in the Bible. See what I mean? So y y y there, that is a definite thing. Biblical truth is reinterpreted. Revelations already happened, for instance. The book of Revelations, yeah, that already happened. We're, we're living in a, in a new age now. See what I mean? Um, joining all faiths is equally valid means of salvation. They're all equal. It's fine. Uh, spiritual maturity, which comes through uh, <clears throat> persistence and spiritual discipline, overlooked in favor of more immediate results. See, the thing is, spiritual growth is something that happens gradually as we seek. Through prayer and that kind of stuff, it happens gradually. But that's overlooked in favor of more immediate results with people who get involved with the cult. They want something more now. Um, they don't want to have to seek after God. They just want an answer from God right now. So they get involved with astrology. What do the stars say? What's my horoscope? Um, 
So spiritual maturity is overlooked in favor of the more immediate results. Um, to many, the cult is more accessible than God appears to be. I'm not saying that God is, than that they think God is. Okay? And as a result, all that they've ever known is the occult, and so they, that's just kind of how it is for them. You know, they, they don't know biblical truth, they don't have a biblical foundation. What's tragic is when somebody who knows what the Bible says still permits it in their life and still permits it in their household. Um, which And there's obviously other, other um, bad sides too. You know, a demon will have you convinced that it is the only reason you can get to sleep at night. But then, the whole while, it's making it hard for you to go to sleep. You don't know that though. And then the demon says, well, if you do this, it'll, it'll help you go to sleep at night. See what I mean, And how do the demons speak to us? Through different things like movies and stuff. You, you see what I mean? Like Satan is really smart. And he knows how to use things. See what I mean? D does the Holy Spirit use things in life to teach you lessons and to help you learn? Well, why wouldn't Satan seize on opportunities of life to, to, to try and tear you down? Right. He, his whole purpose is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He, he has nothing else. That, I mean, that's all his mind is consumed with is killing and destroying. See what I mean? Like You can't honestly be um, naive to these things. So any questions about any of this? This is just the opening to the cult. We'll actually talk about uh, specific... Um, Occultic groups uh, next week. Um, I had a couple comments. Sure, go ahead. First of all, um, if you look when Satan tempts Eve in the garden, it says that she saw that the fruit was pleasing. The things that the devil is going to bring, you're going to want to. Dude, right? It's, yeah. He's not going to tempt you with stuff that you're not going to like. Do you want to eat this turd? <laughs> so, you know, you're you're going to be, like, you were talking about that guy that he wanted to talk to his son yes. who died. Well, you know, you be... may be in a, a state of desperation no. or, or whatever. You're going to be seeking an answer. He's going to bring something that looks like it's going to be the answer to right. you. Right. Yes. Um... Another thing I just wanted to kind of clear up, we, we were talking about like Satanism and that at the beginning, defining. Mm -hmm. uh, Satanism is the worship of yourself. Uh, devil worship is the worship of Satan. Right. So. I just kind of wanted to add something, too, about, um, oh, it's more of a question. When you were talking about the seances and, you know, asking, you know, who was Jesus, wouldn't sometimes they... Couldn't they come through saying me? You know, saying that it was me? Wait, what? Say that again? Like, uh, with what you were going back is saying that a demon would, you know, come through in a seance and say, like, if you asked, you know, who was Jesus, and it could say, oh, you know, he lied. Uh -huh. Couldn't they claim to be Christ? Yes. Okay. Yes. But, see, say, uh, the, the demons usually won't say, I am the Christ. They'll usually say, I am a Christ. Because they don't want you to think that there's only one way of salvation. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that they're very careful with the words that they use okay. to say things more in, all-inclusive. Oh, okay. So I, I mean, like, they'll say, I, I, was, I, was a, I was a Christ. I was the one you knew as Jesus. But there was many Christs. Yeah. Okay. Another thing is they will often throw just a hint of truth yeah. into what they're saying. And they know how much you believe. Because, I mean, hello, they, they, they've seen you grow. Right. So they'll oftentimes use things from your own personal experiences. You know, Hey, Nicole, do you remember that one time when this happened? You know, well, that, was, that was me. That was me. Right. They just kind of enhance. Yeah. So, anything else? Okay. Does the Bible mean something different to each of us? The question of the week. And we're done. We got kind of a late start tonight so as a result we kind of got a light late finish so uh, any questions around before i end it